Joining us tonight here live in studio for the interview is Jay Johnson, who is Secretary of Homeland Security under President Obama. Mr. Johnson, thank you for joining us. It's nice to see you. Rachel, nice to be back. I, um, you are a small C conservative person. Um, and a, okay. a small C conservative okay. person. I don't think of you as ideologically anything. Uh, but I know of you as a, as a reserved and cautious lawyer. Um, I hope you don't mind me saying. I did not know that I should expect you to express public opposition to what's been happening on the border. I didn't know if you would think that you would be constrained essentially by the fact that you held the Department of Homeland Security job before and you didn't want to criticize your successors, but yet you've been very vocal and public about your feelings about this. Tell me about that decision. You're right. I left office believing that it would be appropriate and best not to criticize the work of my former department or my successor. The job is difficult enough without your predecessor criticizing you as well. There are enough people around to do that anyway. Um, about a year ago, I decided, and this was shortly after John Kelly had floated the idea, that if our government and my former department begins to separate children from their parents, that is something I could not stay silent about. Mm. And so you're right. The last several days I've been fairly vocal about it and concerned. And one of the things that I have expressed is that this type of change in enforcement policy may have a short-term effect on apprehensions on our southern border. The longer-term impact, it always reverts to form. It always reverts to normal, so long as the underlying conditions in Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador persist. And it's human nature to want to flee a, a burning building. So as long as the poverty and violence in those three countries persist, we're going to continue to knock our heads against the wall and deal with this problem over and over again. And that's what we need to really address here. The Obama administration, including during your tenure, faced... Uh, criticism um, from immigrant rights advocates and from others about the pace of deportations, about uh, the overall approach to border security, and when, in particular, when there was that spike of people coming from Central America about detaining families together. Yes. Um, uh, what were the lessons learned there? Well, uh, good question. I was surprised, frankly, to find out of 34,000 immigration detention beds in 2014, we only had 95 capable of holding family units. And so we expanded that capability uh, pretty significantly. And frankly, I made a big deal about it. Uh, we did a number of things in the summer of 2014, including highlighting the fact that we were expanding our detention capability. It was not catch and release. Um, we worked with the government of Mexico to help them secure their southern border. We encouraged them to do that. They mm. pledged to do that. And we highlighted the dangers of the journey. So by July 2014, the crisis was pretty much over. Um, I'll never forget, I was always asking the Border Patrol specifically, are we doing this right? Is there anything else we should be doing? And I would encourage my folks to bring forward ideas. Separating families was not something that I and the Obama administration were willing to do. Uh, but in the summer of 2015, a very senior Border Patrol chief told me, this family detention model we currently have is not sustainable because what we're doing is simply filling up the small capability we have, holding them as long as we can, and the large majority of them are still being released on some kind of conditions. And so we kind of reframed the, the model so that more people would see it, but for shorter stays. And then we got the court ruling in the Flores case, which everyone is talking about now, mm -hmm. that really did make it difficult to hold on to families. But we had a very low number in 2015. By 2016, it began to creep up again. 2017, when President Trump got into office with his rhetoric, it went down. And now we're seeing it revert to their normal patterns of 40 to 50,000 a month. And so the, the real lesson to be learned here is you gotta un, you've got to address the underlying conditions in Central America. The Otherwise, new, this problem's going to be The new policy that President Trump set into motion today with this executive order. We're going to take a quick break, but I want to ask you whether or not you think that he's just created a new crisis, or whether or not he's doing something viable. And I also have one other totally unrelated matter that I'm desperate to ask you. Can you stay with me? Sure. All right. How's that for a tease? We'll be right back with Jay Johnson. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.